That's real media. Like to call this meeting to order. It's the committee of the, excuse me, committee of the whole portion of tonight's Barnegat Edu Township Edu uh, My goodness, Barnegat Board of Education meeting. Excuse me. Please, uh, Ms. Cherney, Mr. Hickey here, Mr. Iamonte here, Ms. Levy here, Mr. Moore, Mr. Quelch here, Mr. Zawicki here, uh, Ms. Tarnowski, Mr. O'Brien here. All right, we have a quorum. Okay, uh, we're gonna start off with Committee of the Whole. Uh, first committee up is Mr. Qualch with Finance B&G. Uh, thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Uh, finance actually met yesterday, Finance B&G Committee. Um, we first started out talking over, um, we basically, uh, all of our finances. And Mr. Brennan explained the board will see one significant transfer this month, both in volume and amount. Generally, we have a high number of transfers towards the end of the fiscal year due to the changes in priorities that the school year progressed. Um, our largest transfer is related to health benefits. The reason for such significant under budgeting of health benefits centered on the implementation of our new special education aids. Um, we also talked about, we have three buses that we're retiring and we're replacing uh, one new bus with a 24 passenger and two 54 passenger buses. That's both on the agenda tonight. Uh, also we're, uh, put an order out for 500 new Chromebooks and 30 new Lenovo Think Centers um, for staff and students. Uh, construction update, um, the dump, at the Dumphy School, the pre-K toilets are set to start the second phase of uh, pods this summer. So hopefully they will be done before the children come back to school. Um, HVAC systems, uh, basically everything is going as planned <coughs> for possibly the Brackman School we may have to start the school year under construction there again, but that's just due to some scheduling delays. Uh, the pavilions are fully installed at the high school, if anybody's seen them. I waited two years, but they finally did get installed. Um, the solar project, we have uh, all the schools up and running except for Brackman. Uh, we had damage from the contractor in a few locations with this being resolved, but hopefully soon all schools will be up and running. Uh, for the facilities update, um, after July 4th, 
this flooring that we see right here is going to re be replaced and the pillars are gonna be painted. Um, lastly, the Edwards School, um, basically we're currently assessing what we could salvage um, by our own staff instead of hiring another outside company. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Any questions for Finance BNG? Yeah, I have a quick question in regards to the uh, 500 Chromebooks. Is that part of the normal life cycle uh, transfer? So we'll retire 500 by 500? Yes. Any other questions? <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Quelch. Uh, Mr. Hickey with the Education Committee. Thank you, Mr. President. Good evening, everyone. Education Committee met uh, last Tuesday. Uh, we had several points of order. Uh, first off, um, to clean up the uh, remainder of the year's textbook purchases, uh, we um, decided on the Big Ideas textbook for the Algebra 2 classroom. Um, we also were discussing um, a future social studies pilot program. Uh, it's made up primarily of online modules. Um, it can be used to supplement the textbooks that are already in use, um, but it could potentially replace um, physical textbooks in their entirety. Um, but that's what the pilot program is there to do. Um, tonight we'll be approving another family member um, in the therapy dog program. It will be uh, Mrs. Jennifer DeLue and Tucker. Is, is that Tucker? Uh, he's not here tonight? Okay. All right. Um, so then we also spoke a little bit about the middle school promotion and retention policy 5411. Um, we're going to be pushing that over with some revisions that the educa education committee saw fit um, between, um, it was a very engaging discussion. Um, and then we're going to push that over to governance for final uh, review. And you should see a motion for that, hopefully, on next month's agenda. Uh, we want to say thank you to Mr. Chupervich, um, who donated about $1,000 worth of musical equipment consisting of a trombone and um, different mutes for several instruments. Um, we also spoke about the Communities That Care survey that went out earlier in the year. Uh, this is a triannual um, survey that we do to analyze risk and protective factors that are in place with our students throughout all the buildings. Um, we put a lot of weight in what we get back from those climate type surveys to understand um, how we can change our programs and our social emotional learning concepts. Um, we were briefed on some of the initial action plans which are available in the minutes. I'm not gonna get too deep into that. Um, but the survey data uh, has indicated that it's probably a good idea to put several new types of supports in place. And then lastly, um, last night, we had an information session for the new health and PE standards. Um, as you all probably have heard in one shape or another through the media that there are some controversial ones and we want to get feedback from the community and present, present some information and kind of dispel some of the uh, rumors and myths surrounding those standards. Um, it was a productive yet long meeting. Um, and we promised that uh, we're gonna be back in July and Mr. Barbieri is gonna uh, bring it back in. Um, and Mr. Germano, thank you so much for uh, taking the heat last night, if you will. And um, we're gonna come back in July and, and discuss some more. Um, we'll have a little bit more structure to the meeting and hopefully we'll have um, some sample curriculum uh, that the county's putting together as a model for um, all the 21 or so districts in the county um, to kind of reflect upon and maybe implement in their own schools. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Hickey. Uh, next up is governance. And we met and went over 12 policies for a second reading and three regulations. Most of these uh, policies were mandated um, and all three of the regulations are mandated. So those have been reviewed uh, twice now by the governance committee and will be voted on tonight. Um, personnel committee also met, we discussed, I'm sorry, are there any questions for governance? Personnel committee also met. We discussed a new ADA, ABA sidebar, uh, which has uh, implications with the number of vacation days uh, that can be carried over, um, hourly work rate for outside normal expectations. Um, we had an activity sidebar change, which is mostly just uh, basically club name changes. Several new hires joining the district, including uh, many SPED associated services. Summer enrichment and appointments, summer curriculum updates, and uh, some, some retirement. So uh, thank you to Nelly Araya and Bob Osborne for their service with the Barnegat family. And then we also reviewed a presentation on the staff and culture climate survey. Does anybody have any questions on personnel? Are we gonna go over that survey more in detail? 
because I didn't, didn't personnel committee. You guys didn't personnel. What about us as a board? Because I wasn't able to be there for that. Uh, we can probably set up some sessions to go over that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. We have a presentation, certainly, that can be shared. That does it for that portion of the committee as a whole. Um, yeah. uh, so now we're going to step into the data harvest. You can see there's a bunch of people in the back that have set up a ton of information for us to review, uh, show the progress of each of the schools are making. So if everybody would please uh, take a walk through and check out what your schools are doing. It's uh, some great information back there. Yeah, I got it. 
kids and say, okay, how do you say your name? They just uh, came down and announced you actually Congratulations again. Great job.
I think we're going to get graduation done literally right before. Oh, yeah. I'm practicing. I'm going to be quick rewriting. I'm going to be quick rewriting. All right. All right. Yeah. No, no clapping. Yeah, I'm going to do the phone. Graduation. Graduation. We have about five minutes. In five minutes, we're going to reconvene at the dais. Five minutes.
all different ways. Hi, uh, we have one minute left, please. One minute left. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, we're going to get started again soon. If everybody come back to the dais, please. Can I have a motion to adjourn Committee of the Whole, please? So moved. Second. Mr. Yes. Mr. Iamonte? Yes. Mr. Levy? Yes. Ah. <laughs> Quelch? Yes. Mr. Zawicki? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right. Uh, Committee of the Whole is adjourned at 653. Uh, I'd like to call to order the regular meeting for the Barnegat Township Board, Barnegat Township School District Board of Education for June 14th. A notice of this meeting has been forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Beacon, Tap into Barnegat and place in a foyer of each Barnegat Township School and the Barnegat Township Municipal, Municipal Building and has been filed with the Barnegat Township Municipal Clerk in conjunction with the Open Public Meetings Act. We'll do the roll call. Ms. Cherney? Mr. Hickey? Here. Mr. Iamonte? Here. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Moore? Uh, Mr. Quelch? Here. Mr. Zawicki? Here. Ms. Tarnowski? Mr. O'Brien? Yes, here. All right, we have a quorum. Thank you. Everybody, please rise for the flag salute. Allegiance <laughs> Uh, no additions, right? Okay. Uh, we have one addition to the agenda tonight, and it'll be uh, Marianne from uh, New Jersey SBA School Boards Association. I will pre be presenting some training <coughs> before public session. So can I please have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. 
Um, Mr. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Ayamante. Yes. Ms. Levy. Yes. Mr. Quelch. Yes. Mr. Zawicki. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. All right. Motion carry. Um, motions carry. We have an agenda. Okay. Can I please have a motion to approve the regular session minutes from May 24th and the executive session minutes from May 24th? So moved. Second. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Ayamante? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. Zawicki? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Okay. Motions carry. Okay. Next up, I'd like to hear from Maya Folds, the student representative. Hey. Hey, um, there hasn't been that many separate end of the year events as mostly everything is focused towards graduation and the end of the year. The one thing is the car show that we were planning to have in May, but that got pushed back to October 1st due to weather issues. Uh, recently, we had we celebrated the winner of the class wars, which was the fresh, which was the sophomore class this year. Celebrated that with Chick-fil-A and sodas outside. And the other event is Senior Fun Day, which had different refreshments like smoothies, pizzas, or soft pretzels, and a bunch of inflatables, which were funded by SGA. And now we're just preparing for graduation. That's it. Thank you. Uh, we'd like to take a moment to honor Ms. Maya Folds for her work as student representative this year. She did a great job, so thank you. Thank you. Just grab. Good. Yep. 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 Right. Uh, we just uh, we're going to take a moment to embarrass you again. Uh, this will be the second or third time tonight. But uh, Maya not only did an amazing job all uh, year keeping us informed and participating up here, which is no easy task, uh, having to sit up here and, and, and kind of face the crowd and provide that uh, that level of feedback. Um, but beyond that, something that you may not know about Maya, Maya is basically already going into her junior year of college. And what I mean by that is Maya is our first student graduating through the new plan program where you received uh, 400 and what is it, 47 college credits already? Wow. 47 college credits, not counting the credit she's going to get from her AP class. So that is unbelievably impressive. You are the definition of warming inspires. We could not be more proud of you. You are absolutely awesome. And we wish you so much luck and, and we wish you so well in your next uh, endeavors. And we hope you come back and tell us how everything's going. Congratulations. Here we'll take my picture. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, next up, we'd like to hear from uh, Ms. Sue Mayo, who is the Barnegat Education Liaison. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien, Dr. Latwis, Board of Ed. Thank you for your continued support with our faculty and students. The union would like to wish everyone a restful, enjoyable summer and we look forward to continue to build our relationship with our students, staff, and community. Thank you, have a great summer. Thank you. I didn't just walk away. <laughs> it's, it's your turn, so. <laughs> so Dan, So we are uh, two years into the uh, one of the bigger initiatives that we rolled out, um, which was the uh, started out as data coaches and master teachers, and it really morphed into just one position of instructional coach. 
Um, we have a number of them in the district that have uh, really stepped up over the last uh, couple of years and, and really had a lot of responsibility. There's a lot riding on what they were able to, to step into that leadership role and, and really define what that is. It is not an easy task to work with the leadership team in the district, work with the administration, bring forward that information, having to be you know, really delving into a lot of the trends that we're seeing, whether it's subgroup data or overall data, a lot of the stuff that you guys saw presented, um, or whether it's working with teachers where you still have to maintain that level of trust and confidentiality. You're not going to be an effective coach working with staff if they feel like you're one of the administrators or that you might be sharing some of uh, some things that are shared that might be vulnerable and, and things of that nature. So um, what we wanted to do to tonight was just to take a quick moment and to recognize the individuals that have been doing that position over the last couple of years. They have done a ton, a ton of work. Um, they've really done a great job kind of establishing what that role is. And, and I think when you got an opportunity, if you took advantage of walking around and seeing the data harvest, if you've been a part of the data, har data harvest for the last couple of years, you've seen a lot of growth across the board. Uh, I mean, each of the buildings at each of the levels. And that is um, absolutely uh, some of that credit uh, definitely goes to that instructional coach in that position. They're really the glue that kind of uh, brings the two different factions together and, and really works uh, very hard. And often, like I said, it tends to be a thankless position. So we wanted to take tonight to actually um, make it a opposite of thankless position, thankful position. Thank we want to thank them. So uh, if you hear your name and you're still here, I know some of them uh, started to clean up and started to put some of the stuff away. But if you're here, uh, come up really quick and just be recognized. So is Megan DiRenzo floating around anywhere? Jill Yudman, Larry McCog. I'm so sorry. Megan, here you go. Here, can you give that to Thank you. Uh, Samantha Burke, uh, Cindy Gallagher, Kumeo, Can you hand that to Sue? And I'll hold on to this anyone. Where's Cindy? I know you were floating around somewhere. Um, Lauren McGinnis, Al Brazil, Brittany Lyon, and Nora Green. Nora Green has recently stepped over to the dark side of being an administrator over the last six months, but she was one of the first ones and, and really uh, helped to kind of establish this role. So we felt it would be remiss if we didn't recognize you in that capacity, too. So, Cindy, that's yours. Nora, you're floating around somewhere. Al, here you go. Lauren, where are you at? I saw you. Oh, there you are, Lauren. So, a big round of applause for these guys. It's not an Thank you. A quick picture. Come on up. All girls. All girls. Picture. Really quick, I uh, totally forgot. Uh, Mr. Junker was not able to come here in person tonight. He was also one of the people that got recognized, but he actually got his about three or four hours ago since he was not going to be able to be here in person tonight. So, Chip, I think you're online. I think I saw your. Um, I think I saw your face on the Zoom, so, but congratulations. So congratulations again, thank you. With that, I'll invite up Dr. Kirk Rockwell. Good evening, everyone. Barnegat is a place where we believe in a positive school climate, family togetherness, and community involvement. And it's the marriage of these three principles that defines our upstander program. To unite Barnegat as a district, we recognize students with the Bengal PRIDE acronym. So in June, we use the letter D, which stands for determination. To reward these students, we grant them with a gift card for a family meal. And tonight's gift card is to Luigi's Restaurante. So I'm honored tonight to recognize six upstanding individuals, one per building, for their commitment to making Barnegat a better place. So students, when you hear your name, please join Dr. Brian Latwis and also Mr. O'Brien, and you will get your plaque. First, I would like to recognize a senior at BHS, Ms. Maura Glines. The 
a fantastic student who has demonstrated steadily over the past four years her dedication to education. She always strives to achieve her best academically and ranks in the top 10% of the class of 22. She is a committed athlete and a four-year member of the golf and tennis teams who's attended all matches and games. She's a talented artist and consistently produces beautiful art. In the fall, she will attend the Honors College at Rowan to major in studio art with a concentration in illustration. Maura's teachers, coaches, and counselor are so proud of her consistent demonstration of excellence and her dedication as a student, athlete, and artist to become the fine young adult she is. And we wish you all the best, Maura. Next, we have eighth grader at Brackman, Emily Zhang. Emily's dedication to learning has been impressive and exemplary throughout the entire year. However, it has been during the final days of the school year that her dedication has been most evident. We have noticed Emily still going above and beyond with an effort to finish out her eighth grade year strong and her dedication to learning has made her very deserving of this award. Congratulations, Emily. Next, we have fifth grader from Horbelt, Peyton Sagas. Peyton is a kind and caring student who always puts others' needs above her own. She exhibits a growth mindset in ELA, math, science, and social studies, as well as in many clubs and other school activities she's involved in. She seeks challenges and is not afraid to make mistakes because she knows that they will help her become a better person. She's always sure to include others in class and to make everyone feel like they belong. And this is especially evident when some students try to work alone and Peyton invites them in and encourages them to take part in whatever she's working on. She's an exceptional student who strives for perfection and takes her learning to the next level by teaching what she has learned to her peers. Her positivity is infectious and our class and school are fortunate to have her as a committed, compassionate and clever young lady. Congratulations, Peyton. Next, we have fourth grader at Donahue, Michael Godley. Michael has displayed the upstander trait of dedication all year in room D in many facets of the definition. He is loyal to his beliefs and what is right. He is dedicated to trying his very best, even when the work gets challenging for him. And he does not quit no matter what. He's also dedicated to being true to himself. He makes good choices and persuades others to do the same. The most important aspect to Michael's dedication is with his friends. He's incredibly devoted, supportive, and loving towards his peers. He is beloved by the Donahue students and staff, and he is truly deserving of this honorable award. Congratulations, Michael. <laughs> Next, we recognize second grader at Collins, Ms. Kira Feeney. Kira has shown remarkable allegiance to her education. She's always prepared to learn. She goes above and beyond the expectations of what is required in our second grade classroom. When Kira does her work, she takes exceptional effort and care into all the areas of her day, including ELA, math, science, social studies, and all of her special content areas. This shows in her grades that are outstanding. And she also shows, shows her wholeheartedness in the classroom when she works in groups. She is a team leader who works well with her peers and she is looked up to as a role model. Kiara is devoted to helping her teachers in any areas that she can. And she deserves this dedication award for being extremely committed and dedicated to her education and overall responsibility. Congratulations, Kiara. And last but not least, we have a pre-K student, Johanna Pizarra. <laughs> Johanna has consistently been a shining light for two years in our classroom. She includes every child in play and schoolwork. She always offers a positive word and smiles to her friends and teachers alike. She strives to improve and can already read and often reads to her friends. She is dedicated to being a good friend and a role model every single day. 
Congratulations to all of our upstanders. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. So we want to start with um, the Real Media Poster Contest Awards, um, which are given to eighth graders. This is for the third and the fourth marking period. Um, there's three winners, the first, second, and third. The, um, they won uh, the gift cards are sponsored <laughs> by um, the Rotary this time. So first place is a hundred dollar gift card, second place is 75 and third place is 50. So we're going to show you, um, they actually do it in Tara's um, health class. It's part of their health grade, but it's also um, put into the contest. And then the Barnegat communities that care, um, public relations are the ones that vote on the winners. So the third place winner is actually a video, and um, we're going to play that video. Oh, the sound didn't work. <clears throat> huh? No sound. Okay, so that is the third place winner. Um, it did have sound to it, but it didn't come through. Um, so can you announce who it is, Mr. Uh, Dr. Dr. Latwis? Mike Yankowski. Well, I thought you were gonna announce it. So the kids were at the, um, the yeah, the Bulldog to Bengal. So um, they weren't sure if they were going to be able to attend or not, but we wanted to recognize them anyway, and Tara will uh, bring their awards to them tomorrow in class. So our second place winner is um, DJ Swerk, and his is a poster, and it says one wrong decision could mean no more decisions. Will you make the right decision? So... Um, and when they're designing these, they're supposed to do something that kind of catches your attention or, or grabs your interest. So um, this definitely catches your attention. And our first place winner, which I love, uh, Keegan Dunn, if you start up, know where you'll end up. So it's showing what reality is and what their expectations are when they're vaping. Um, and this is a problem and it is something that we need to address. So having these winners, their posters will be up for Red Ribbon Week and they actually stay up for a while, but they go up for Red Ribbon Week and um, which will be in October in all the, uh, the middle school, the high school and Horbelt school. And we're also getting a billboard that they will be, um, they'll be on there as well. You could tell I don't do this, right? <laughs> hey. Okay. So oh, that's that. I I appreciate Tara immensely because she really puts a lot of effort into this, and you could tell by the uh, kids' work that they do. So now we're going to the best, you know, the most obedient ones that have been here waiting are going to get their awards. So. This is a program that is near and dear to my heart. Um, we started in 2016, Joanne? 2016 with um, Joanne's dog, Tink. And Joanne's dog, Tink, retired and is 15 now. She's the first, the first dog there is Tink. And um, so 
when Tin uh, Tink retired, we started with Winnie at the uh, Dumpy School. And now from Winnie, we have Winnie, we have Mac at the pre-K, we have Coconut who does uh, kind of triple duty. She does Donahue, she does um, Corbell and she does Brackman and Basil who is new to our um, high school. So if I can have Mac come up first, everybody give a round of applause for Mac. Woohoo! No, maybe give the dog a kiss. <laughs> pick him up. Come on, pick him up. <laughs> All right, so the next uh, four legged human we're going to do is Winnie. Winnie is at the Collins School, but Winnie was also. Um, at the Donahue School, like she started doing, and yes, and Horbel, yes. So poor little Winnie was doing all of them and she's just a little doll. So she had a hard time with that. So we also have um, yearbooks for you. Okay, and next, coconut. Coconut! So if you notice the pictures with coconut um, are at the Horbelt School, the Brackman School, and the Donahue School. And one, um, coconut came to the diversity paint party. So if you notice like one of the pictures, that's our portraits from the diversity paint party. coconut as well and a gift card from and that one was from all three schools so um for pet smart um and we have one more award but uh the the doggies a little under the weather and that is for Vito salvanto and for basil does everyone see basil the picture of basil up there basil is our new <laughs> dog for the high school so come on up Vito. So one other thing I would like to say is um, this program is very, I just love it. And uh, as you guys heard, we have another dog that's going to be coming on board which is Tucker and Jen DeLue. Um, but the Salvantos who um, breed, raise, uh, I don't know, train, they do everything with the dogs. Um, they have another one called Kiwi. 
that uh, is coming up the ranks. So um, it's something that, you know, we will definitely keep going, right? My board? <laughs> yes? <Of course. laughs> there. And thank all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just a few other district highlights that I wanted to uh, put out there and, and uh, a couple more updates on my end. Um, first, the district partnered with the Ocean County College through the early college program, which allowed BHS students to take classes for college credit. Uh, the families and students that participated saved a total of $40,680 this year. So the district obviously will continue this partnership for the 22-23 school year. Uh, the Barnegat High School Marching Band and Color Guard placed first at the American Legion State Convention Parade Contest. Um, I don't know if anybody had the opportunity to come out for the uh, one Barnegat Festival that we had, uh, but that was hands down, I think, one of the um, uh, coolest uh, nights that we've ever had here at the, uh, at the high school. Uh, being able to highlight all of the different arts from grades uh, five all the way up to 12 um, was truly remarkable. We have some of the most talented students that participate in the band, in band the arts. Um, we have some of those talented staff members that lead that. And really, uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't give a shout out to Mary Camerata. Uh, if we can just uh, all pay attention to her for one second to embarrass her a little bit in the back. Mary, could you wave so we all know? No, Mary, get that hand up there. Come on. Mary, uh, Mary had a vision of putting this together and uh, it was truly, uh, to say it was a success would be an understatement. Um, so congrats, thank you very much and congratulations on an awesome event. Uh, Jacob Coop won, uh, took home the first, uh, or took home silver medal in the golf for Team New Jersey at the Special Olympics last week in Florida. Uh, and I'd also be remiss if I didn't give a big shout out to Sue Rogers. I don't know if she's still floating around, but uh, Sue coaches uh, uh, for the Special Olympics. And uh, that's something that we are beyond proud of her uh, for. She does a really remarkable job with that. Uh, BHS Jazz Band. Um, and uh, the four fine arts students were showcased at the State Teen Arts Festival. So again, keeping the theme of our amazing art programs here and our very talented students. Um, really quick, I wanted to highlight uh, last night, I was at the Women's Club for the Mirage um, and uh, through their normal uh, uh, meeting where they generously donate thousands of dollars to uh, local uh, social agencies uh, that, that do a lot of really uh, good things for a lot of people that, that need that help. Um, we were uh, surprised last night with a $1,500 donation by the uh, Mirage Women's Club to uh, help fund our CARES closets. And our CARES closets essentially is one in each one of our schools and it provides uh, basic needs for students that maybe uh, that need that. So it could be anything from deodorant to sneakers to a jacket. Um, so it's through the generous donations uh, like we received last night um, that really uh, continue to keep that going and help a lot of students uh, throughout the year. So big shout out to the Mirage Women's Club and Bonnie Levy, who is, uh, is one of the executive board members for that. So thank you to the Women's Club. And uh, from there, I'd like to transition to uh, a moment of silence. Uh, we recently learned of a former board member, Maria Pereira, who passed away on June 9th. Uh, Maria Pereira was a board member for a number of years. Um, I was very fortunate to have gotten to know her, uh, know her and work with her. Um, you'd be hard pressed to find somebody that uh, was, uh, uh, you'd be hard pressed to find a better person. You'd be hard pressed to find somebody that stands up for what they believe in more than she did. Um, she was the definition of small but mighty. Uh, she uh, she was uh, had no problem speaking her mind um, and uh, it was uh, very often for the betterment of the school district, advocating for students and advocating for staff um, and the parents. She really was a remarkable human being, and uh, she is definitely gone uh, gone from us too too soon. So uh, we will sorely uh, miss uh, Maria Pereira. Um, we hope she rests in peace, and we'd like to just take a moment of silence to uh, remember her. So. Thank you. And with that, I will turn it back to you. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Latwis. Uh, I'd just like to piggyback on what uh, Dr. Latwis was saying. Uh, Ms. Pereira was a board member when I joined the board, and uh, Small But Mighty was uh, a great way to, to reference her. She 
she was a, a pit bull and she fought for the students of, of Barnegat. So uh, thank you. I would like to thank her for all her contributions to Barnegat and condolences to her family and friends. <clears throat> uh, last night, we had a parent information night for the New Jersey Health and PE standards. So I wanna thank everybody that did attend that event. Uh, the purpose of that session was to collect feedback for what our community felt was appropriate so the district could navigate the requirements of the standard. Uh, the school district will find a way to meet the requirements while understanding and advocating for the values of our community. I do feel we are unable to come away with any direct action that we could support the community. The attendees remained focused on why we should not do it versus what we should do. And I think uh, when we have a, another session later in, in, the, in the summer, um, we hope to come away with some tangible you know, guidance of what our community uh, would expect the school district to, to be able to provide for them. Um, you know, just to be clear, the standards themselves are not an option, but the implementation of those standards through our curriculum is where we can have <coughs> that control. And I, uh, I, I know that the school district administration and, and staff uh, will, will remain focused on supporting the needs of the community. Um, so again, there's a, another info session that will be held this summer. Please keep your eye out in your email and uh, social media to be aware of that happening. Uh, I'd also like to discuss a staff culture and climate survey, which was mentioned briefly during the Committee of the Whole. Uh, there was five major themes identified in the survey, was communication, relationships and growth, student behavior, workload, and new staff transitions. And the administration, after this survey and, and getting the feedback, uh, was tasked with coming up with action plans to uh, better support the staff and, and make them feel uh, that these, these uh, themes that have been identified were being worked on. And I, I feel that the district has come up with some great ideas to help with you know, areas where staff uh, is feeling valued and heard by, by the administration, uh, that there's timeliness in the communication um, with the relationships and growth, working on the camaraderie and the work groups, and under student behavior, teachers feeling ill-prepared to handle the increases in student behavior issues. Uh, so the district will look at improving the code of conduct and discipline policies, providing training for tactics for de-escalation behavior management. Uh, for workload, the district will look to try and streamline bureau bureaucratic processes, and foster collaboration to lessen the individual workload, uh, work as a team rather than as an individual. And then understand, help, help the staff understand the why, rather than say, this needs to be done, why are we doing this so that everybody can buy in, everybody can feel engaged. And then with new staff transitions, we're gonna work on improving the onboarding plans and uh, a welcome plan for each of the new hires. Um, with that, summer is about to start, so I wanted to offer everybody to take advantage of the boot camp and other opportunities that the kids can be engaged in their education during the summer. I would like to thank all the staff, faculty, and administrators for the school year. Um, it's been a long, another long school year, so thank you for all your hard work. Thank you for being there for our kids, for my kids. Uh, have a great summer. And while I recognize that we are not perfect, we will continue to welcome the constructive feedback so that we can make necessary adjustments to support our students, staff, and community. And we look forward to and value that feedback. So thank you very much. Um, next up is uh, we have a resolution. That needs to be read? Uh, that's me. All right, so the reading of this resolution of censors in accordance of and required by the School Ethics Commission as well as the Commissioner of Education, whereas the above caption matter arises from a complaint that was filed with the School Ethics Commission on October 30th, 2020 by William Junker, the complainant, alleging that Richard Quelch, respondent, violated multiple provisions of the Code of Ethics for school board members. And whereas respondent is a school official as defined in the School Ethics Act, having served and continuing to serve as a member of the Barnegat Board of Education, the board, located in Ocean County at all times relevant to the above captioned matter. And whereas at its meeting on January 26, 2021, the commission voted to transmit the above captioned matter to the Office of Administrative Law, the OAL, for a plenary hearing at which complainant would carry the burden to prove the alleged violations of the code within the standards set forth in NJAC 6A colon 28-29B and NJAC 6A colon 28-6.4. And whereas on November 30th, 2021, the Honorable Carl V. Buck III 
Administrative Law Judge ALJ Buck issued an initial decision detailing his findings of fact, legal conclusions, and a recommended penalty. And whereas at a special meeting on February 25th, 2022, and after considering the full record in the above captioned matter, the commission voted to adopt the findings of fact from ALJ Buck's initial decision to adopt the legal conclusion that respondent violated NJSA 18A colon 12-24.1D and NJSA 18A-12 or colon 12-24.1J but did not violate NJSA 18A colon 12-24.1E and or NJSA 18A colon 12-24.1I and to adopt the recommending recommended penalty of a censure. And whereas pursuant to NJSA 18A colon 12-29C, the commission's decision was forwarded to the commissioner of education for final determination on the recommended penalty. And whereas the following, following the issuance of the commission's decision, respondent neither filed exceptions to the recommended penalty nor instituted an appeal pursuant to NJAC 6A colon 4-1 at SEC. And whereas by decision dated April 14th, 2022, the commissioner concurred with the commission that censure is the appropriate penalty for respondents violations. And whereas NJAC 6A colon 28-10.12D provides that for a penalty of censure, suspension or removal, a resolution, resolution shall be adopted at the commission's next meeting following the commissioner's decision. And the resolution shall be read at the next public meeting of the district board of education following its adoption and shall be posted in such places as the board posts its public notices for not less than 30 days. And now therefore be it resolved that the commission, the commission adopts this resolution saying that respondent is hereby censored as a school board, of, as a school official, as a penalty for having violated the act. And be it further resolved that the board is ordered to read this resolution at its next regularly scheduled public meeting following the commission's adoption on May 24th, 2022, and to post it in such places as the board posts its public notices for a period of not less than 30 days. Okay, and we will now transition into uh, Marianne Friedman from the New Jersey School Boards Association. Uh, she is here to provide training uh, to the board members on rules and responsibilities. To give you a little bit of an idea of uh, the support that school boards provides the, uh, the Board of Education members, um, they provide regular trainings. Um, those regular trainings are to kind of, uh, to stay current on topics, uh, educational topics, um, stay current on any legal changes and the implications to the district. Um, and, and obviously tonight, uh, one of the focus will be on roles and responsibilities. Uh, school boards provides a tremendous amount of uh, resources uh, to the board members. Um, and this is one of, the, uh, one of those resources. So we're very excited to have you here tonight, Marianne. And uh, with that, I will turn it over to you. Thank you. They always say never follow kids or pets, <laughs> following both. <laughs> so thank you very much. <laughs> My name is Mary Ann Friedman. I have acquired Barnegat when Kathy Weinkoff has left the association. She's still alive and she's still doing fine. And my takeover of Mammoth and the other portion of Ocean that I didn't have is not a hostile takeover. So it's all good. Uh, but I'm happy to be here to, this evening to talk to you about roles and responsibilities. And really, we're going to talk about the roles and responsibilities and how to ensure effective meetings tonight. And you have this PowerPoint in the right hand side of your packet. And then you also have the code of ethics, you have the 12 month planning calendar, and then also so our sampling of programs, which are the programs that I can come in and bring into you. So the board's role is really from that of a balcony view. So it's we used to have a field service rep that talked about being up in a hot air balloon and looking down over all of Barnegat and saying all of the students who come to the school, all of the children who come to our schools are in our care, as opposed to being under a microscope. The microscope is what your superintendent uses and you are from a balcony view. 
So the four functions of the board are policy, providing guidance through policy, and that's what helps your, and I know you're going to be approving some policies this evening, so that's what helps to provide the administrative staff with really the day-to-day -day responsibilities and the day-to-day -day actions, how you want things to be run in the district. So that's what policy is for. Then to provide a program of quality instruction, and that's what your planning is for. And then to show evidence of student achievement that advances student achievement. Then it's to provide for effective management of the district by employing a superintendent and providing an annual evaluation of the superintendent. And that's the appraisal piece. And then communication, make sure that there are communication um, protocols or roles in place or um, standards in place to be able to ensure that your actions as a board get communicated to staff and to the community. So what, who does what in public school governance? Well, the state actually provides you with the ability to be able to work on behalf of your school district and make those local laws. And I'm gonna to look to this one for a second because that's very tiny. Um, the New Jersey constitution gives the legislature the power to run the school districts, to govern the schools. And then the legislator de designates its power and the rules to make rules and regulations to the state board of education. The State Board of Education and their staff, which is the Department of Education in New Jersey, has the authority to carry out the mandates that have already been created by those higher levels. And then within all these laws, the boards have the opportunity to establish local control and to show local control over their school district. So you do have a lot of leeway in a lot of situations. In some, you do not but in some you do have a lot of leeway as to what you can do. And so really board members are to listen to the entire community and to be able to talk about the aspirations for the school district and really listen to what they have to say and utilize that in developing programs for the district. And then also that all students, every policy that you create and everything that the board does by CUSAC, which is the Quality Single Accountability Continuum that monitors public schools in the state of New Jersey every three years, you have to be able to provide evidence that every single thing that you do is in the best interest of all of the students in the district. So the board and superintendent roles, the board's role really is to have a vision, create a vision, a mission, goals, and policy. And you determine what it is you would like to see happen in the school district. So that's why you set those district goals. You set that you develop the mission and the vision along with the administration and along with your community members. You just finished up another strategic plan and that I'll be bringing in to you on August 30th. And hopefully everybody who participated in the strategic plan will be able to be there for that presentation because that's your ground up process. That's how you listen to your community. Not only do you invite them in, but you also listen to what they have to say and you develop the goals that they have worked with you to develop. And then your administrative team develops the action plans for those. So that is the what, what, why, and how much, and then you vote on those things. In the meantime, the superintendent, once you have that vision, mission, and those goals, he is going to develop the objectives and the procedures that are used to carry those things out, action plans and regulations. He is the how. So you are the what, and he is the how he's going to get what you would like to have done accomplished. And the how consists of when, where, and by whom, and then how will we know when this has been accomplished? And those are the indicators of success. And so the superintendent will recommend things to the board and the board will vote on those. And then the superintendent implements those. And you should be getting reports on a fairly regular basis, communicating with the superintendent as to how often you wanna have those updates on how things are going and how the implementation is going. So as I said, board members are really policy makers. You're determining the policy that helps give the administration the day-to-day -day operations of the district, how you would like to see things run. Bylaws are actually the board's laws and regulations and policies for how the board will govern, what you will do in the case of a board vacancy, how you elect your president and your vice president, all of those kinds of things, the effective meetings, um, how an agenda is built, those kinds of things. And then your visionaries and your goal setters. So you determine every year with the superintendent, and I believe you've done this with Kathy Weinkoff in the past couple of years, and I'll be coming in, I think we're doing a retreat on August 30th as well to develop district goals. Those will likely fall from your strategic plan. 
So the strategic plan really is the thing that sits at the top and then your, in, your district goals, annual district goals will come from there. There can be some other things that are implement that are brought about in those district goals because they may not have been identified as district as in the strategic plan, but those can happen as well. And then the superintendent, after those goals are developed and some objectives at that district planning goal section session, then he'll develop the action plans for those. And then your communicators, your goal is really to be able to communicate the aspirations to your public and for the public to be able to communicate their aspirations to you and for you to bring those things to the board table. So the superintendent's role is really the chief advisor to the board and he's going to make recommendations based on sound best practices and things that are going on in the schools for how to implement and how to best improve things. Um, he'll provide briefings on the, street, the state of the strategic plan and on your district goals as well. And also you're going to evaluate him on how he does in terms of, of achieving those district goals and that strategic planning process. He's also the executive officer. So he is a board member, but he is a non-voting board member of the board. So he is part of the administrative team. And that's really important because a lot of times people don't understand that the board and the superintendent, it's, it's really a checks and balances kind of a system. And the board can't do anything without the recommendation of the superintendent. And the superintendent can recommend everything, but if the board doesn't approve them, then nothing happens. So the only thing that the board can do to recommend themselves is the appointment of a superintendent when your superintendent is leaving, retiring, or whatever. Um, that's the only thing that the board can do with, that does not come at the recommendation of the superintendent. And then he's the educational leader. He's really the one that's going to model for all of your staff how to do how to handle best practices, how to implement those, and how to improve student achievement in the district. So another way really to look at it is that it's this is kind of a recipe where the board needs to be able to listen and really consider the recommendations of the board and the board needs to vote on those things and the superintendent needs to be able to make those recommendations. And oftentimes the superintendent will provide you with the basis for those recommendations as well. This is why I'm going with this particular um, action plan or this particular avenue that I think we need to take instead of something else. And that's what makes the recipe work. So I'm going to ask you if you could indulge me for a minute. So an item is appearing on the screen and you need to decide if it's a board responsibility or a superintendent responsibility. So who administers the contracts? Superintendent, right. How about who establishes and adopts policy? The board. How about approves the strategic plan? The board. How about approving curricular materials? The board. Evaluating the superintendent, the board, recommending and implementing policy, superintendent, right? Overseeing instructional programs, superintendent, and then overseeing district leadership, superintendent, right? So really the most effective way is for the board as an operating body and a governing body to really come together with the superintendent to really consider, and the superintendent has to listen also to what the board is talking about and what their concerns are. And then for the, the board to be able to really listen to the superintendent's recommendations. So the board acts as the governing body, that high level governing body, not getting involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the board and representing your community and your students. And then the superintendent is the chief administrative officer and really the educational leader of the district. And that's both when those, both of those pieces are coming together, that's when student achievement really can soar. And we've seen that happen. Now, one of the ways to make this work best is for no surprises. And that's no surprises from either side, from the superintendent to the board or from the board to the superintendent. So if you hear, if you're at, do you have ShopRite, Stop and Shop, Acme? ShopRite, okay. So if you're at ShopRite before a board meeting and you hear somebody talking about how we're gonna storm the meeting tonight because we're concerned about transportation or because transportation is usually a big thing. Um, we, we're not really happy with the transportation routes. 
um, you need to let the superintendent know, let the board president know, and or the superintendent. Because if you were scheduled to be in a small room, you may wanna move into a room such as this, which is a little bit larger. So when people come in, they have the opportunity to sit down and be comfortable. And likewise, if the superintendent hears those things right before the meeting, to let the board president know who can let the board members know. So it re we really do mean no surprises from either side. And then not breaking the chain of command in order to make this all work. So if you hear something or you see something, you need to let either the board president know, I'm not sure how you set up your communication for the board members to go to the board president or to go directly to the superintendent, but either way that's fine, but to let that person know so that they can let the superintendent know so that he's not taken unawares or off guard. If you know that people are coming to the meeting, again, that they're going to have issues with something, let somebody know so that you can make appropriate arrangements for that. But your chain of command is directly to the superintendent or to the board president if it's to go through the board president, and that's okay too. If you get involved in anything that is at, at a different level, somebody calls you and says, I have a concern with Mrs. Friedman, that my daughter's second grade teacher, I'm saying that I'm Mrs. Friedman, not another Mrs. Friedman, okay? I don't know if you have a Mrs. Friedman. Um, but if somebody calls and says, I have a problem with Mrs. Friedman, my daughter's second grade teacher, you wanna refer them to the lowest level in the chain of command, which is talking to the teacher. And then let them know if they don't feel that they have resolution after talking to the teacher, they could talk to an assistant principal or a vice principal, then to a principal, then to an assistant superintendent then to the superintendent. You are the court of last resort. So if you get involved in trying to, in any way, shape or form, help that problem or help that situation, other than referring that person to the chain of command and how to get through that, you won't be able to participate if it comes to the board level. Okay, and that's really important because you might wanna be able to participate in that if it comes to the board level. And you also wanna let people know that you're referring them to the chain of command because most often issues are resolved at the lowest level. So most issues aren't going to get to the superintendent or aren't going to get to you. And generally, if they get to the superintendent or the superintendent knows they're coming to him, he will let the board know and advise them of what's been going on. And keep in mind that resolution doesn't mean necessarily that the parent or the staff member or whoever got what they wanted. It may mean that they understand why they can't get what they wanted. And that's really important. So that's resolution too. If it's a staff member, there are building reps that they can go to from the, um, the negotiated agreement. Everything is outlined in their negotiated agreement as to how to go through the process. And it can end in a grievance with the superintendent who would then advise you of that as well and give you recommendations. And then it's up to the board to make a determination. Yes. I just wanted to clarify one thing that you had said. So if a board member ends up getting involved in any of that mediation, they have to recuse themselves when it gets seen before the board. They should. Thank you. It would pose, it could pose a conflict of interest because they've inserted themselves in a situation that's more of a day-to-day -day operations that they shouldn't have. So that would pose a conflict of interest in coming, to, in being part of that end result if it comes to the board. All right, thank you for that clarification. You're welcome. So it's really important that you stay in your lane. Um, you have no legal status other than any other citizen in your town, um, other than when you're at a legally advertised meeting with a quorum or a majority of the board that's been advertised. So that's really important. And really remember the following, as individuals, you do not direct the superintendent. As individuals, you don't direct other staff members. The, only the board can direct the superintendent by making a motion at a meeting, having a second, having a conversation, a discussion about it, and then having that motion passed. That's what shows the, the superintendent the direction that the board wants him or her to take. So board members do not get provide direction to the superintendent as individuals, nor can they speak for the board unless the board has authorized them to do so. I was on my board for nine years and I've been doing this for 13 and a half and I've never seen a board authorize an individual to speak for them unless it's the negotiations committee. And then you're usually authorized to negotiate within certain parameters, but even that needs to come back to the board for a vote by the full board. So really make sure that you're not speaking for the board, 
seeming to take actions for the board, directing the superintendent or any other staff member or making decisions for the board. That's really important. And these things are outlined in your, in your bylaws also. So you can always check those. And then this is one of my favorite slides that one of my colleagues came up with. The essential board skill is being able to count to five. If you're a nine member board, you have to count to five because that's how many people it takes to get something passed. So if you have something that you wanna see happen and four other people agree with you, that's likely going to be passed by the board. If you don't, it's likely not going to be passed by the board. And then act really with the majority. So when the majority makes a decision, if it's a 5-4 split or a 6-3 split and you're in the minority, that can be really difficult to deal with. And I understand that because I was in the minority a couple of times on my board. It's not a nice place to be. But if you can recognize and respect the authority of the board to have made the decision that they made, even though you don't agree with it, remember all of your votes happen in public so anybody can take a look at how you all voted on something so that's no secret but if you can respect the authority of the board to have made that decision regardless if you don't agree with it or not that's when your community really can respect the board because you've done that you've walked the walk and you've talked the talk and it's easy to say when you're in the majority oh everybody who's not in the majority really has to respect this when you find if and when you find yourself there you'll find it's not so easy but that's when the rubber really meets the road and then this is the code of ethics this is in your packet as well and i believe it's part of your agenda for tonight and I'm not going to go through all of these because I think you've gone through them all before. There are 10 tenets of the code of ethics. And really when you're thinking about what your roles and responsibilities are, this is the thing that you need to look to because this will really tell you what you should and what you shouldn't be doing. And this was developed by the, um, the School Ethics Commission and the legislature. So these are not my rules for you and they're not New Jersey School Board Association rules for you. They're the legislature's rules for you as enacted by the School Ethics Commission. And then communicating with your community. We talked about that a little bit before, really representing your committee, your, your committee, your community. I came up with a new word. Um, representing your local community and also acting as representatives of your community and being ambassadors to your community about the school district and the aspirations of the community and also of the school district. And then you have a responsibility really to listen to all citizens and to not just listen to them, but make sure that you're listening to understand what they're saying. And there's a big difference there. So that listening really takes precedence and really has to be something that's exercised um, because those who have special points of view really do need for you to understand what those are. And then you can help to possibly bring those things to light if they need to be. Provide access to the public. Your minutes are generally on, the, on your, your website. Your mission is on your website. Your vision is on your website. Your strategic plan will be on your website, district goals, those kinds of things. Th that information should be available to your, to your public as well. And that's really important um, because you really do represent the community and represent your students. And then this one is when are serious, when are issues serious enough to bring directly to the board? If you feel that something, there's something serious that you've been told about that needs to come to the board, talk to the board president who can relay that information to the superintendent. If there's ever anybody's safety that's at stake, that needs to be relayed right away. Okay. And if you have children in the school, how can you talk with their teachers now that you're on the school board? That can be a little bit tricky. Um, I had children in, in the school when I was first elected to the board and um, parent teacher conferences were usually kind of interesting. And I usually made the statement, I'm here because people know that you're a board member, right? So I would always say, I'm here as Eva's mom today. I'm not here as a board member. So I'd really like to discuss what her progress has been like in the school, in, in your classroom. And is it okay to visit the schools? It's okay to visit the schools if you've already communicated with the superintendent about why you need to visit the schools. If you're coming in to pick up a sick child or a sick grandchild, that's fine. But if you're expecting to be able to go into the schools and walk around and talk to people and see what's up and how things are going, that's not a good idea. 
those are all distractions. And especially today with all the safety issues that we have in the country, much less in the state, those are things that you wanna really be mindful of. So any of that should go through the superintendent and should be able, the superintendent will let the principal know or an assistant principal know that you're coming in and what the reason for that is. And then how do you respond to parents calling or emailing about district staff or other concerns? Again, that's that chain of command that we already talked about, okay? Above all, you're responsible to your students in their schools and it's all of the students. And every policy that your board approved needs to make sure that it's looking at what's best in the best interest of all of the students in the district. And there really is no one big giant step towards all of this. It's all little steps, lots of lots of little steps. So what questions might you have? I guess I have a question on social media. Sure. And how social how boards interact with social media. So we have a social media page as a board of education where we share highlights and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, what is an appropriate level of communication with? Uh, you know, right now it's set up as like a one way communication. We 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 don't really have any comments coming into the page, um, and the board page doesn't respond to comments individually. Is uh, that's best. Okay. It really is. And somebody administers that page. Yes. So you have somebody, an administrator who's, or somebody in the district who's following that page to make sure. Yes. Yep. Okay. That's really the best way to do this. We don't recommend NJSBA and the school ethics commission do not recommend that individual board members have board of education pages on social media. It's, um, it's an accident waiting to happen pretty much. Um, because you have to say in all of those entries that you might make, well, I am a board member of the Barnegat School District. I am not representing the board, nor do my person, these are my personal opinions that do not reflect those of the board, and I do not have the authority to speak for the board. However, there was a, um, an ethics ruling, a school ethics commission ruling back in 20 or 21, I'm looking at your board attorney, um, that talked about the fact that although somebody, and it's in our ethics presentation, although somebody said all of those things in their blog on social media, because they kept speaking about themselves as a board member, the School Ethics Commission felt that the, the general public could not discern that this person actually was not speaking for the board, even though he or she said that they were. Do you remember what year, was it 20? I think it was 21. I think it was, it was either the end of 2020 or the beginning of 21. And that was really the first time that NJSBA said, okay, so all the disclaimers in the world may not stop being a, an, a post being a, an ethics violation, because if the person speaks about the board in such a way and being a board member in such a way that the general public couldn't discern that he was not or she was not speaking for the board, even though they said they weren't, it's a violation. So that was a big eye opener for all of us. So you really do have to be careful. Um, and it's just it's just wisest not to not to have a, a blog or any kind of social media that identifies you as a board member. I like the fact though that you do have a board social media page and that that information is pushed out because that's really important for people to be able to go to that media page and see what's happening in the district and what the board is doing without inciting comments and things like that, which could get, into, get you into trouble. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, you made mention that being a board member is a lot about representing the community, mm -hmm. whether or not your personal beliefs or, you know, taking those opinions and transferring them over into our meetings and stuff like that. Um, collecting that feedback from the community, aside from our formal meetings and some of the work groups we have, we're kind of limited on social media to a certain extent. What are some of the better practices you've seen um, board members put in place to go collect that without actually... Um, representing themselves as a board member. Do you, do you get what I mean? 
Yeah, I think so. So you could be a member of another organization or you could be a liaison to another organization where you could take that feedback and bring it back to the board and, and thank people for offering that information. And you can say, I'll take it back to the board or I'll take it back to the superintendent or to the district. And um, then it puts it in the hands of the people who can, can make something happen with it. But it's important not to make any personal promises for the board and not to say, you know, when if you're running for the board and you're not a board member, you're not bound to the code of ethics. So sometimes people run and say, I'm running to get a new lacrosse team, a new girls lacrosse team started or something like that. And they don't really realize that they need four other people to be able to do that. Um, you know, plus the recommendation of the superintendent and the finances behind that are available behind it. There's a lot of things that go into that. So it's important to be careful but if you hear information that you feel should come to the board, then you should bring that information to the board. And you can let people know, I'm not the, I'm not the person who can make this happen, but I can certainly bring your thoughts and your, your opinions to the board table. Thank you. Did that help? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you very much, Mrs. Friedman. Thank you very much. I appreciate you taking the time and I will see you all on August 30th. Thank Take you. care. Have a Good great night. summer. You too. Thank you. Next, I would like a motion to enter public session, please. So moved. Second. Mr. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Iamonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. Zawicki? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. All right, we are in public <clears throat> session. I'll read the statement. Um, Barnegat Township Board of Education appreciates and welcomes public comment, advice, and suggestions, especially when it is intended to assist the Board of Education. Please feel free to speak to the board during the public session. Comments and discussions will be limited to one five minute period per individual unless requested by the chairperson to continue on a point of clarification. Public comment at a special meeting of the board shall be related to the call of the meeting in accordance with the Board of Education policy. Each participant must be recognized by the presiding officer and must preface their comments by an announcement of their name, address, and group affiliation if appropriate. Your anticipated courtesy to the members of the public and the board is appreciated. With that, the floor is open. Thank you. Uh, anybody online, please uh, raise your hand in the in the chat. Uh, anybody in the room, uh, please raise your hand and we'll call you up. I do see um, Mr. Junker has his hand raised. He'd like to speak on the Zoom conference. <clears throat> Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, it's William Junker, Barnegat Education Association. Uh, just a quick statement. Barnegat Education Association uh, always represents its members to the fullest capacity, whether it's through grievance, arbitration, or unfair labor practices, or in, in this case, ethics charges. We do not take these actions lightly. The association has weighed out all the evidence before filing these charges, and we were confident um, that there were clear violations of Mr. Quelch's ethical oath as an elected member of the Board of Education. Uh, this matter yet proves again why these oaths, and in turn, the tenure laws, remain paramount. Mr. Quelch was well aware of what he wrote in his emails as well as his comments that he made concerning the events. The, action, the association is pleased with the commissioner's final determination of censure. And uh, as with any of the before mentioned actions, the association does deem these matters to be closed this, at this time. We look forward to moving ahead with all parties amicably, and we hope that board members will adhere to the ethical oaths of office. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Junker. Uh, Anybody in the room like to speak? Please. Yes. Yeah, please come to the podium. I need your name, address, please. Um, hello, my name is Jordan Young. I do preside in Barnegat. I am here on behalf of the Barnegat High School Marching Bengals. Um, I am the drum major of this organization for the students. I've been a part of the program for four years. And when I went to go get my yearbook on Monday and I was flipping through the pages, I was heavily concerned that we did not have our own spread in the yearbook. And as time went on, I went through the yearbook, I continued to find more errors and mistakes made in the yearbook. I noticed that administration was not in the yearbook. Maintenance crew was not in the yearbook. IT, 
security, and individual students were also not presented in the yearbook. Now, of course, there are instances where students have been absent for photos or anything like that. In past productions of our yearbooks, there are sections called camera shy, which basically means we don't have a photo of you. And I know, also noticed that that was also missing from our yearbook. I am here to voice my concern, seeing as to how multiple students can see how they feel underrepresented by their school and their peers, seeing as they flip through the pages, they see the same 13 group of kids and not seeing their organizations, their achievements, or basically themselves in some cases. So thank you so much for your time. I would just like to hope that this gets solved soon because I know that most parents are upset that they had to pay up to $100 for some of their kids to not even be mentioned in this yearbook. So um, thank you for your time. Thank you. Sure, I can, I can jump in. Uh, so first, I appreciate you taking uh, uh, coming up to the mic and, and providing that feedback. Um, I can tell you that uh, Everybody involved was equally um, upset, including uh, the yearbook advisor and, and I think the yearbook committee. Um, you know, as when I was a teacher, I served and on and, um, the yearbook advisor and, and was one of two people that took lead on that. And there are a lot of moving parts and, and there are a lot of different things that go into it. And inevitably, sometimes you make a mistake and, and that's really ultimately what happened here. Um, when you make a mistake though, you know, the expectations that you're going to own up to that mistake and then you're going to do everything to make that mistake right. And I do know, um, without getting into too many specifics, I believe at this point, my understanding is that certain individuals were issued a refund and given the yearbook for free because of that oversight. I believe that the pages uh, that represent having the marching band and whatnot were um, already sent out to the company and are in a production and hopefully will be in our possession in the next couple of weeks, which will get mailed out to the students as inserts into the book. Um, so, and I do know that talking with the administration um, and, and the yearbook advisor, uh, you know, a few different times, there's, uh, there's changes going forward as far as trying to uh, create some additional checks and balances and things like that. So that way, you know, we're all humans at the end of the day and, and everybody makes mistakes and, you know, that's inevitable and that's going to happen. And, but when it does, you know, we want to have some additional checks and balances that kind of kept catch those prior to going production and things like that. So that way, Hopefully you can you know try to to, to remediate those those uh, before we get to this point. But um, you know I have to be honest. Like you know when first learned of it, um, I was in the marching band when I was in high school. So uh, you know I, I I feel your pain. Um, you know I I definitely uh, you know we were disappointed in, in the mistake that transpired. High school administration was you know disappointed and felt bad. The yearbook advisor felt felt terrible. Um, then, you know, we did try to collectively put together a solution as fast as possible to try to make it right. So I do, you know, make no excuses, um, you know, take full responsibility and, and apologize to you and, and the rest of your, uh, the marching band that are absolutely amazing, uh, very talented individuals and deserve as much recognition as could possibly, uh, could possibly receive for the amount of hard work that you guys put in. So I really do apologize. Does anybody else in the room like to speak? <clears throat> anybody else online? I have a motion to close public session, please. So moved. Second. Do, do you want to speak back there? Oh, we have one more. So please. On second. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Michelle Bryant. Um, I have uh, put through uh, four great children through this um, awesome, prideful Bengal um, school. My daughter, Jordan Young, uh, speaking today because she's very passionate about um, what she has seen throughout the years seeing her sister be a part of school activities, track and field, um, getting notary. Um, her other sister, um, her banner hangs in the high school here, um, Brianna Young. Um, she placed in uh, the discus um, for the states. Her brother has accolades at our middle school and was part of a wonderful Bengal prideful football team. 
that went on to college. Here she is standing here. I am very proud of her for doing that because this school has instilled a lot of pride in what these kids are doing. I see her get up every day and push forward. And she's being an example for other bangles that are coming up. Today is a great day because you have younger bangles coming up and through the school and she is representing all of you. So I thank you for trying to get a quick resolution for this yearbook, but she's also saying that they're leaving behind a legacy that is printed, that they can share with their family and friends. We ask that you consider possibly because you are the board and you're instilling pride. So we want you to consider taking back the yearbooks, reprinting them, <laughs> fixing them so that these people that we are growing up can look back and say, my community stepped up. They understand their mistakes. They didn't put a Band-Aid on it. They said, I'm going to fix it and make it better. We need to be better. And we're going to do better because this is what you're instilling in your community of young people coming up today. That you fix this and then redistribute the books to these wonderful students who put so much effort into their everyday participating in the sports, the clubs, doing this to say that I came from Barnegat High School. We're setting precedence here. We ask that you make the best recommendation that you take the yearbooks back, correct them, and resend them out to these students so that they can have that legacy in print and something that they can share just as you all have in your own past, as I have in my own past. I thank you so much for your time and listening to us. Um, and the, we have some Barnegat family back there from the, from the marching band. I'm not just representing just the marching band, but all those other parents who are unable to make it here today, that their children are you know, a part of this. This is a family. Everyone wants the very best for our children and want to continue the legacy of pride, which is hanging everywhere in this building. We don't put a Band-Aid on it. We make it right because we're putting ourselves out there. We want our children to continue that. Thank you again for your time. Thank you. Anybody else like to speak? I have a motion to adjourn public session, please. So moved. Second. Okay, Mr. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Iamonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. Zawicki? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Right. Public sessions closed at 8-12. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> let me help, uh, is section 14, uh, finance B&G committee motions, one through 14. Can I please have a motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Mr. Hickey? Yes. Mr. Iamonte? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Mr. Quelch? Yes. Mr. Zawicki? Yes. Mr. O'Brien? Yes. Right. Motions carry. Uh, next up under uh, section 15, uh, education committee motions, one through seven. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Mr. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Iamonte. Yes. Ms. Levy. Yes. Mr. Quelch. Yes. Mr. Zwicky. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. All right, motions carry. Uh, next item up is uh, Education Committee for Informational Purposes Only for Audit District Workshops. Uh, <clears throat> next up, can I please have a motion for items uh, 17, uh, Governance Committee, items one and two? So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> okay, any discussion? 
Mr. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Iamonte. Yes. Ms. Levy. Yes. Mr. Quelch. Yes. Mr. Zwicky. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Motions carry. And next up, can I please have a motion for uh, agenda item 18, personnel committees, items one through 31. So moved. Second. All right, any discussion? Mr. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Imante. Yes. Mr. Levy. Yes. Do it again, sorry. <laughs> Mr. Quelch. Yes. Mr. Zwicky. Yes. And Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Your motions carry. Uh, next up, can I please have a motion to enter executive session? So moved. Second. All right. um, Mr. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Imante. Yes. Ms. Levy. Yes. Mr. Quelch. Yes. Was, yeah. <laughs> um, Mr. Zwicky. Yes. And Mr. O'Brien. Yes. All right. We're an executive at eight fifteen. You want. We have a motion to adjourn, adjourn executive session. So moved. Second. Second. Mr. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Iamonte. Yes. Ms. Levy. Yes. Mr. Quelch. Yes. Mr. Zawicki. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Out of exec at 1009. Um, are we doing these motions as separate? Uh, yeah. Okay. We'll do the hip report. I mean, you could read them off if you want to do like just a section. We could, if you want me to read them off, I can read them off on the blackboard. Okay. Yep. Uh, I want to do the hip report first. Yeah. Let's do. Uh, yep. Have a motion for the hip report. So moved. Second. Okay. Um. Mr. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Imante. Yes. Ms. Levy. Yes. Mr. Quelch. Yes. Mr. Zwicky. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Motion passed. All right. I will read off the motion for. I have. You can have it. I don't need it. I have another one. Probably for one. <laughs> Three separate motions that we're going to have. We have. Motion to approve employee 4514 from position code 231-15-240-01 at site location five to position code 232-50-240-01 at site location 15 at the annual salary as per the relevant collective bargaining agreement for the 22-23 school year. One motion. The second motion is to approve employee 4465 from position code 1080-2401 to position code 1080-1212-01 to site location 15 at an annual salary as per the relevant collective bargaining agreement for the 22-23 school year. And our final and third is motion to approve employee 6730 from position code 1080 Twelve twelve zero one at site location fifteen to position code two thirty two fifteen two forty zero one at a site location fifty. I'm sorry, at site location eight at an annual salary as per the relevant collective bargaining agreement for the twenty two twenty three school year. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Okay. Other discussion. Um, Mr. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Iamonte. Yes. Mr. Levy. Uh, <laughs> Ms. Levy. Yes. Uh, Mr. Quelch. Yes. There's a wiki. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. Okay. Motions carry. 
Motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Second. Mr. Hickey. Yes. Mr. Aymonte. Yes. Ms. Levy. Yes. Mr. Quelch. Yes. Mr. Zawicki. Yes. Mr. O'Brien. Yes. We are adjourned at early time of 12. Treat that last one one more time. <laughs> sure.